points of rate breaking stuff. And we can't come back. Or if they do end up having whatever end up happening. You've been in a cave, thing. my friend. This is my last lecture ever. Right? I got laid off yesterday, and we have no return to classes after spring break. What do you mean you got laid off? Wait, what? Yesterday Wait. was the day that they announced the layoffs, and I was one of them. No way. So what does that Which mean? is why we're neighbors for now. What does it mean for physics? Uh, well, the, it, it doesn't start until the end of the school year. Oh, okay. So Amy and I both got laid off. We both don't have jobs once the school year starts. I just want to say something. I don't think that's fair for you to, for them to have even said that, like, while well, you still have to finish the school year. We need to be able to plan. Right. I, I, I don't have a problem with that. And, and they told us in January they were going to be doing layoffs. Right. But well, why? For like budget cuts? Yeah. Because we we don't have that many students. Dang. So every department there, there, there were four teachers who were laid off. There are three teachers who are leaving that are not being replaced. Um, all office managers are laid off. Oh, dang. Yeah. They're, they're going to get rid of all of the divisions and replace it with two schools. So they'll be like, I assume one would be like a school of medical sciences and you'd have OTA and nursing and, and all of the science and, and PA and then another school that would be, you know, all of the other stuff. That's what I assume, but I'm just guessing. And they're gonna hire four people for the office pool. So we have seven, seven office managers who are laid off, but there's four new positions, so there'll be jobs for four of those office managers, assumedly. They have to apply, and we'll see if they get hired. And then there's a bunch of staff that were laid off as well. But, like, are you, so you're you're not, we're not going to be doing anything in class anymore? Are you not? Nobody is. Wait, but what about labs? I thought there okay. was. So here's what we're going to be doing for the rest of the semester. And this is not unique to me. This is what we're doing for all classes. Each teacher will have something slightly different. So reading assignments will continue just like they are. A difference being that I'm going to change the lead time from one week to two weeks. What does that mean, the lead time? Um, the, the time at which it becomes available for you to start working on. So I, I want to make sure you have more time because wherever you are doing your homework, you might have a completely different schedule. Well, I have to do all my classes on Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. And so I want to make sure you can configure your time with my class time. So lectures, I'll do them just like I'm doing now. The only difference will be you won't be here for me to ask questions to you. I may ask a question and wait a few moments for you to think, but I won't wait for you to respond. And then I'll post them to YouTube. And I will do these about a week earlier, so once again, you can conform to your schedule. So the, the reading assignments will be available earlier, but do at the same time you normally would be. Oh, since you didn't know, everyone also needs to know spring break is a week longer than it's supposed to be. No, 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 I knew everything. Oh, I was just wondering, okay. it's very confusing. The way they send out the emails is yeah. confusing. It sounds like we might be going back to classes soon, soonish. No. 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 You can stay on campus. You can stay on campus. And but they're going to charge also, you for but, being on campus. Yes, yeah, but they're still, they're still, um, thinking about having small classes still in session. Only Maybe. ones that require physical presence, like a a, yeah. Nursing. If you're doing a nursing clinical, then you'll have to be and here. Those programs have already let their students know. So, like, if you're not in the program and you don't know, then you're probably not. Probably, yeah. Oh, so they're not going to end up shutting down anymore? No. The, I think that's still well, possible, though. It's the, so confusing. The, the plan is that. The college will still be bare bones functional, but there will be no classes meeting except for ones where you have to have a specific be here. But like, they want us to come back. No, they don't. Yes. They said you're you free to choice. come back. You have the choice. They said that they in the Q and A last night, Ryan Tallett literally said that he wanted us to come back. That's why that they were charging us still because he charged. wants us to come back. That's because they want to charge us. Yeah, that's because yeah. they want to charge you us. Want money, yeah. Yeah. You don't have to go back to stay at home. I was trying not to broach that topic. If anybody needs a place to stay, I'm in the house just saying. Like, look, you know, like, I'm not like, 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 like,
whole situation with. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Yo! What is the last person to do? <laughs> He's going to be fine. It's coronavirus. Like, we have to help each other out. Max, Max, not allowed to stay in my room. <laughs> <laughs> that's on record. <laughs> Everyone knows. Oh, I, I just got it. Unfortunately, <laughs> that's on record, too. <laughs> Dorms will still be open, and you can stay there if you like. The cafeteria will still be open, and you're going to spend money there whether you want to or not. <laughs> but they said that wow. they said that this dorm still might close because Did it? No. it's just it's yeah. very it's, that, That's not what the information that was sent. So yes, yeah, we had a meeting last Monday. All right, you said you're good. like the, the dorms are not going to close, but like, we're just going to have RAs there. Dean Stock said this morning that they were still considering. Oh. I, I would say everything. I would say everything's probably still considered because maybe things get worse than they anticipated. Yeah. yeah. But that's the plan right now. Okay, and then for like the exams. So. On the like one on one thing, what if we like don't do well with like oral stuff? Well, then this is. I'm, I'm pretty strong on this because it's a better way to evaluate what you know with the oral exam. I will basically have a print exam, we'll be doing a Zoom thing, and so you'll have like on your screen, you know, the exam as well. Okay, we'll and be then, able to see it And as then well. we're going to talk it through. Oh my gosh. I'm not going to try, I'm going to try not to indicate whether you're right or wrong, though. Mm -hmm. But you can say, I understand this, I don't understand this, I understand this thing really well that you didn't ask me about. And so it's a better way to actually gauge what you know. Because okay, just as I long as we can you, see the test, too. I only asked you like 24 questions, and you can't cover everything we talked about. Right. And you might have really prepared on this subject, and then you look at the test, and there's nothing on that. Well, with the oral, you can say, hey, what about this? I'm ready for this, and you can get points for that. Okay. okay. So now that doesn't mean forget everything and just study three topics and say, well, I don't know any of that, but I know these three things. What but, about the focal length question, then? How are you going to do that? But you said what's going to be on the exam. Oh, that's good. That's a really good question. Because isn't um, most of us all about yeah. drawing out the right. Well, no, no, it's not mostly about, but there's a question about that to make sure you understand how it works. Yeah, we can explain it to you. And so, yeah, I'll probably have you explain to me how you draw each of the rays. And, you know, it, it's it's not ideal. But but the the exam, if we were face-to-face -face and whatnot, it is the ideal way, I believe. It's just it's so time consuming we usually don't do it. But since I only have two of you guys and we it's it's virtually impossible to send out tests and, and say don't don't have anyone around you because we we don't want to spread a virus, but you know, it just doesn't work. I got I got a question. I got a question. So like she has her hand up. Oh I'm sorry, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Um so is there anything like a time limit on these? Um yeah, I was told the Zoom sessions are limited to 40 minutes, so that would be a hard time. Uh, limit. What? Well, that, that limits that limits the length of it. It's not like okay, you're too slow. It limits the length of it. That's what they that's what they pay for them because yeah. I do Zoom sessions. Right, that right. Are like it's what they pay for. It's the three Zoom hours. Basic. Okay. Just pay for it. We're like we're talking to institution that's going to charge you for food, but encouraging you to stay away. But like, do you, like, like real talk, do you think you're just gonna survive this though? Because like, there's a lot of changes, there's a lot of things going on, there's a lot of movement. Yeah, for, I don't think. for every school that this happened, like this is happening to every single every college across the country. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Even that, well, no, they're not. not, not no, that's happening. They, they're already not happening enough with that, that more than just this institution. Right. But like, this whole yeah. change between two colleges is like pretty big though. Yeah, that's that's a big change that probably is is unique and. Honestly, Amy and I were talking, and we're like, kind of glad we're not going to be here for the fall. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. so confusing. I don't think you think you're not going to make this, though. Obviously, by the way, I don't know what you're doing. I'm sorry. Hey, if I could slap you in here, I'm good. It's scary and strange. They're struggling, but like, I think we're going to be able to do it. Oh, 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 o
you know, under my go. A, B, C is under. They're gone. <laughs> Yeah. We'll figure it out. No, no, no. We'll figure it out. No. I think any anxiety, any added things about forecasting the future that you cannot predict is useless. Call, just, call. Just but it's not, it's not even a call. It's about like, the institution itself. Just deal with today. Yeah. But I, I, I think God is right. You know, I, God, God is in control. Yeah, why? Listen, hold on. Why? Listen. I'm like super frustrated because like, when I, like, listen, the rest of the world, this is nothing. Like, the rest of the world lives like this every single day. Like, when I was in Zambia, Zimbabwe for seven months, like, people, people's lives are in danger constantly. People are always thinking about, like, they can't think about, like, what, what kind of food they're going to eat. They think they're going to get attacked. Like, I was in Zimbabwe, and it was just chill that, like, riots were happening, and, like, we could have got, we were driving in cars, and, like, people could have stopped us and pulled us out, like, killed us and blew up our cars, because that happened to people. But like, let me tell you, it doesn't like if I sat if I sat there the whole time and thought about all the horrible things that could have happened to me, like I couldn't have survived. So like this attitude, you're in America, you have running water, you have food, you have shelter. This is preventative measures. Like we're not dying, you're not sick. Like I'm not everyone. I'm just saying the anxiety, the anxiety is making me so annoyed. Like this is fine. We're going to be fine. Just be your focus one step at a time. Yeah. Right. The reason I'm letting this conversation go is because these are important things for us to deal with. It's not physics, but it's important for us to deal with it. How we're going to do the rest of the school year, how the right. college is going to survive. Those are important things. That's dear to my heart. But we do have to finish <laughs> something. So, <clears throat> homework will be just the same, except for I'll make them available earlier, just like, you know, Everything I'm trying to make available earlier so you have more time so you can be more flexible. Laboratories, the group projects, I'm just going to cancel those. We just can't do those, right? It's, it's not possible. Um, for otherwise, for the labs, I'll either give you data, like you can't take the data when you don't have it, or I'll have computer simulations for gathering data. What about the 2% attendance bonus? Um, that will end today unless something miraculous happens and we reconvene at some point. For oh, that hurts. Can you keep track of like you can see how many people participate? So can't we just call that the two percent? I, I could, but it. <laughs> well, I need it. We all need it. I still have the same principle. Right. You'll still be allowed the nine points. Mm -hmm. So you either have it or don't have it now. If you have it now, then you're kind of like protected. If you don't have it now, there's no way you gotten back to having it by the end of the school year, so you're not losing anything. Okay, that's okay. Um, so, the, yeah. Office hours, I'll be, of course, available by cell phone or email. I'll put that contact information on Moodle. I initially had it here, and I realized I have more viewers on YouTube than, than I have students in class by quite a bit. And I don't want them to be calling me on my cell phone. Um, so I took that information out. Um, and I will put weekly updates on Moodle about you know what we're doing this week, what assignments are due, what's coming up, as well as when a student asks a good question, I'll make sure I put it there. I will try to have like I'll have Zoom office hours set time during the week when I'll be sitting at my computer waiting for anyone to come join me. And I will also one thing I did put on here, but it's something I mentioned in previous classes, good idea. I'll make a form on Moodle for people to post homework questions, and oh, and so we can have a collaborative. That's fine. That's the next one. Okay. So, any questions about how we're how we're going forward from here? This is about. Yeah. Well, I mean, you do the reading assignments. Yeah. Do the homework, take tests, do whatever the lab stuff is. Is anything different for me specific? Um, well, we have our special right, lectures. We have, we'll have our special so lectures. Right. That will still be on the yeah. YouTube. But otherwise, like, not otherwise, no? Okay. That's a good question. <laughs> oh, yeah, for you, you got to come back. we got to have contact hours. Like, you got to come up to Colorado where I'll be. I mean, I already am here, so I live off campus. I have a job. Okay. Actually, before I lecture on stuff, I just want to bring out something cool. 
And of course, I'm going to put this in front of Andy. You guys should just come over here. And just yeah. hang out. Aww, so, you have a talk, Tubby. <laughs> I do. <laughs> when, when you look in this, Andy, what do you see? I see a little pig. Oh. She sees a little pig. Oh. See, you should all like come up here so you can see okay. this. Okay, that's like a little Let's go. Oh, geez, I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh, that's a little bit. Hey, this is the last contact. <laughs> <laughs> what do we got? Wait, huh? Wait. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Wait. Come again? Hey, it's a hologram. I don't like this. Is that how they do it? Oh, that's so mean. Holograms are electronic. This is not optical. Is it going Oh, holograms oh. are electronic. Oh. Holograms are actually the topic that we're talking about today. Where is it? Where is it? Is it a frog? Is it a picture? Oh! Is it a picture? Whoa! This is great. So wait, why is this not a hologram? Um, it, holograms are a diffraction thing. This is not a diffraction thing. What is this? No, it doesn't work. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know a... A traditional name for it. Yeah. It's just not like, oh, there he is. There he is. <laughs> okay. So so first, let's describe what you saw. A pig. A pig. But what was special about that pig? It was, it's super cute. It was super cute and it was floating. One, two, three, four, five. Six. Uh, everyone but Sarah, right? No, it's Sarah and Diana. Wait, Sarah? Um Sarah's already on vacay. Wait, oh, and I am right here. I got confused. <laughs> <laughs> just like, like I'm gone. Okay, so, so what was going on there? First of all, it starts with this. What is this? A mirror. A mirror. What is the shape of the mirror? It is a concave spherical mirror. So, what have we learned about? Concave spherical mirrors. Um, diverging. Diverging. Converging. And what what is the important number we use to describe them? The what? We talk about the focal length. But what is the focal length? Focal length is radius over two, half the radius. It is half the radius, but what does it mean? These are the kind of questions I'll be asking you on the test. Oh, oh. 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 see. Is it multiple choice? Yeah, I was like, is it multiple choice? I guess it's multiple I, choice. I am still thinking about that. I want you to answer what you know and not just have, well, of those answers, I choose this because I want to see what you know. <laughs> You're correct. But what is the definition of the focal length? Where the if you have, if you have revealing, if you have, it's about the incident light. If you have, what kind of incident light the the light meets at the focal point? Oh, if you have like a light ray, it bounces off the mirror. And then it if you have parallel rays, parallel rays, oh. parallel rays they meet the focal point. And now remember, light works the same forward and backward. Mm -hmm. So if I put an object at the focal point, what happens to the rays? The rays hit, hit the object. The, the rays reflect off of the they reflect off of this from whatever light source we have and hit the mirror and then what do they do? And then they go back to the point of origin. They, they, do little, little they go well if it was parallel rays they would have met the focal point. Oh, wait. Right. So if this is the focal point, they're gonna come out parallel. Right. If I put this at the focal point, then the light the rays coming out are all gonna be parallel. And so that's how this is designed. The distance between the bottom of that and the top of this is one focal length, which pretty much matches what you were indicating. And so this little piggy is at the focal point of this mirror. And so light from that little piggy comes up and hits this mirror and then goes straight down. But if the parallel rays strike the second mirror, what do they do? They bounce forward. They bounce back to the focal point. They come back together and form an image at the focal point. Which is? And so we have the image, a real image, that's formed right here for each part of the pig. And so when you go around, you see that pig up there because you're seeing the real image formed for each part of the pig. 
So basically the pig on the bottom is at the focal point of the upper mirror. Yes. And then where it's projected is the focal point of the bottom. That's mirror. exactly right. <laughs> Take it off. I understand that. <laughs> He's got that. So I had my life all moment for the day. All right. What well, day? Who are we kidding? For the month. <laughs> Not true, because it was just a week or two ago that David in class said, Oh, ha, ha, ha. Okay. Microscope, we've already gone through all of this, but I want to talk about a couple cool things to know about microscopes. How many people have practical experience with microscopes? Okay, we got a few. Too much. Excellent. So with a microscope, one of the things you want to have is better resolution, a better image quality. And things that limit that image quality are, well, there's a diffraction limit, no breaking stuff. Um, a diffraction limit, and we have ways of getting around that. So the diffraction limit, that's part of what I was supposed to talk about in class today, but I'm not going to get there. I'm pretty sure based on time. But here's something we do. If you have the object here, you have a certain angle of light that you're accepting. If you can accept a bigger angle, then you're going to be able to get better resolution. And so one of the things we talk about is the, the numerical aperture of the microscope, which tells you about how much light it can gather to make its image. And that light gathering actually has to do with this angle. And so if we can bring this closer up, it's going to make a bigger angle for collection, right? What do we do to make that happen? We do things like put it in immersed in something like oil here. And when you immerse it in oil, as you have oil between your microscope slide, you have whatever your viewing end of the slide, then you have oil between that slide and your lens, then you're going to allow it to collect a better angle, and thus you can get more light from it and you can see it better. Now, we're not going to do a calculation with this and how it works. Just that's one of the tricks. There's a reason you have the oil immersion uh, microscope is so you can collect more light, get a bigger numerical aperture. Um, other things we do, okay, so that, that went forward one. Let me stay here. Other things we do to improve what we get out of a microscope is we might have a microscope that doesn't use white light. Not black light. Does anybody have experience with a microscope that doesn't use white light? They'll use microscopes that have a blue filter. It filters out all of the colors except blue. What's special about blue? Where do you find blue in the electromagnetic spectrum? It's a higher frequency or a shorter wavelength. And if you have a shorter wavelength, it allows you to have a better resolution to see more detail. Wait, having more pixels? Kind of like that, yeah. But like Wait, so if we can, if a higher frequency means a higher wavelength. It means shorter wavelength. Oh yeah, short, shorter wavelength helps us see better. Why, because there's why like, can't we see like ultraviolet? Well, you know, no, it helps us have better resolution. Oh, it's better resolution is the term for the smallest detail you can see. Okay. okay. So a shorter wavelength, you can see smaller details. And, and it has to do with diffraction, which we, we won't get to today. But it's part of the topic of the wave physics that is the goal for today. Okay. But before we do the wave physics, I have to talk about telescopes. Now, microscope, what was the goal of a microscope? To make small things big. To make small things that are nearby magnified. What's the goal of a telescope? To see things that are far away. To magnify far away things, not small things, right? You, you look at the moon, and you're not looking at a small detail on the moon. You're looking at a big detail. But you want to magnify, you want to make it make a bigger angle. So you tell them he's far. And so you're looking at far things with a telescope and magnifying them. So the telescope is fundamentally differently designed. I was going to copy in my slide where I went through the math of the magnification of the telescope and forgot to do that. It was on the slide that had this picture. But with the telescope, question, Claudia? 
Oh, okay. I didn't see that in front of you. I just saw you yeah, like this. Like this. Yeah. <laughs> so there are two types of telescopes shown here. Who invented the telescope? Wrong. Not Galileo. It was not Galileo. Okay, you are right. We don't know who who invented it. It was somebody from the Netherlands or Flanders, not Ned Flanders. Um, and Galileo heard about these cool party games that they have because that's what they were really selling them for. You go to a party, and instead of having you know a little blow thing, you know, blows out the little thing. You look through this thing and you see, ooh, that is so crazy. And he was like, that's awesome. I can use this. So he went to try to buy one. Guys were already gone, but other people told him how it works. And then he made it sell. Yes, ma'am. The first record of a telescope is from the Netherlands in 1608 in a patent filed by Hans Lippershey. Okay. Hans, Hans, Hans Lippershey. That was Flemish people. Okay, so Galileo improved the design of the telescope. He didn't invent it, but he did improve it. And he used his telescope. He was the first one to systematically observe the skies of the telescope. And that's why a lot of people think that Galileo invented the telescope. Galileo's telescope was made like the picture on top. The picture on top, you have two lenses. One is closest to the object, so we call it the objective. One is closest to the eyeball, so we call it the eyepiece, just like in a microscope. He's trying to, to sell her goods there. In this case, a physics demonstration. Notice with the Galilean design, the first lens never gets to form its real image. It would form a real image, but you have the eyepiece too close. And then that eyepiece takes the rays that were converging and makes them back parallel so the eye sees the Im image infinitely far away. The good thing about this design that Galileo used is it doesn't invert your image. You're going to see an upright image of that tree. The second one, the Newtonian design, you have the object and the eyepiece are both converging lenses. And in this case, you have an you have a real intermediate image, but that intermediate image is inverted. And so with this, you're going to have a, a negative magnification and an inverted image. So I want to do the math really quickly. What was the definition of magnification? We had two of them. Uh, height of the image over height of the object, and then negative distance of the image. Okay, so that's one of the definitions. That's what we call the lateral magnification. What's the one we learned in class on Wednesday? I did say there's two. That was one of the two I was asking for, just in case David feels like I'm saying, hey, a wrong thing. Theta aided over theta aided. That's the one we're going to use for calculating the magnification of a telescope. Both of them are correct equations. They're different because one has to do with the size, one has to do with the angle. So if we look at an object, the object is how far away? Very far. And so the theta unaided, I'll just put u. Of course, that's the height of the object over the distance for the object. But... It also would be the height of the image over the distance for the image. But if the object is really far away, where is the image going to be formed? Yeah, just remember the equation. So if distance object is approaching infinity, what's a one over infinity? Zero. Zero. So what is the image distance going to be then? It's going to be at the focal point. So distance image is equal to the focal length of the objective there. And so we have theta unaided is equal to the height of the image over the focal length of the objective. Yes? When do we determine when, what infinity is? If it's more than two meters, I'm going to call it infinity. Because our focal lengths are measured on you know, like 
generally pretty small. Okay. It, it depends on the focal length. With, with a real telescope, it might have a two meter focal length for the objective. Well, it's got to be very large compared to two meters, so right. over 100 meters, maybe. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so, so that's theta unaided. That's theta unaided. Now, what's theta aided? Well, for theta aided, you have your eyepiece. <laughs> this picture is very deceiving. You have the, for the unaided eye, you put your object at the focal point, focal length of the eyepiece, you want your object there. So there's the image from the first lens is the object from the second lens. So I'm gonna still call it the same HI. And it's one focal length away. So there's my theta aided. But what's theta aided? Using our small angle approximation, say theta is tangent theta, what's theta aided? Just look at that triangle. That's going to be uh, well tangent opposite over adjacent. And, uh, HI over the focal length of the eyepiece now. One thing I did wrong. The one thing I did wrong was I should have a negative sign for the theta, um, the first angle, because. This is actually upside down to inverted image, right? The, the first image is inverted from the object. And so if I want my actual magnification, it's going to be height image over focal length of the eyepiece divided by minus height image over focal length of the objective is minus focal length of the objective over focal length of the eyepiece. That's the equation for the magnification of a telescope. That's a lot easier than the equation for microscope, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. I like the telescope because that's easy to work with. And what's the separation between the two lenses? Distance from the objective to the intermediate image is what? We just did it. We, we just did two triangles, the first one of those two. What was the distance from the objective to the first image? Um, DI is focal length objective. What's the distance from that image to the eyepiece? Focal length of the eyepiece. So what's the total length? This is between the two lenses. It's the sum of the two focal lengths. So the length of your telescope is equal to the focal length of the objective plus focal length of the eyepiece. Now there is a clear relationship between focal lengths and your telescope. The focal length for the objective, if you want a big magnification, what do you want the focal length of the objective to be, big or small? Just looking at the equation. If M is to be big, the thing in the numerator should be big. So focal length of the objective, we want it to be big. So we have long focal lengths for the objective lens. What about the eyepiece? It's in the, the denominator. We want that to be small. So the way to get a good magnification is long focal length for the objective, short focal length for the eyepiece. In a telescope, what do we adjust? The eyepiece. So you have different eyepieces you can put on there, and those different eyepieces will give you different magnifications because they're different focal lengths. Wait, uh, hold on. Is it still the, well, okay, so the, the unaided is theta u. Okay, and then the And the aided is theta a. Okay, and that's how you got it. That's how I got it, yeah. Because okay. it was the ratio of theta aided to theta unaided. And then, like, that would really be due to the box. Yes, well, the one that's in the box. And the, the bottom and the bottom is the total length or something? The bottom is the total length, yes. Yeah. Notice the minus sign, it's inverted. Unless your eyepiece has a negative focal length. Your eyepiece has a negative focal length, then it's not inverted. And of course, the length is going to be shorter because of the negative focal length in the length equation. Uh, that's, that's my telescope discussion. So let's do a problem. You have a telescope with an objective lens of focal length one meter and an eyepiece with a focal length of five centimeters. How long is this telescope? Uh, 1.05 meters. 1.05 meters. 
How did he get that everyone that's not David? Just add the two together. What's the magnification of this telescope? Okay, so I had to convert them to the same unit. That's really important. And so we have 1 divided by 0 0.05 or multiply top and bottom by 2. We have 2 over 0.1 minus 2 over 0.1. So the answer is minus 20. And we usually put a little x for times. So it's a minus 20 times magnification. But what if I want 50 times magnification to, instead of 20 times? What do I change? I don't change the objective. I change the eyepiece. What focal length do I need the eyepiece to be to get 50 times? Okay, 0 0.025? What, 0 0.02? 2. If I have 0 0.02, then I multiply top and bottom by 5, and then that's... So then that would only be a two centimeter long eyepiece. So yes, it'd be two centimeter long eyepiece to get a magnification of 50 times. So it's not hard. Now, the length of the telescope, if I want the 50 times magnification, what's the length of the telescope? The length of the telescope would be 1.02. 1.02. So it's three centimeters shorter. You may or may not have noticed that when you change the eyepieces, you have different eyepieces or different lengths in their housings because you have to adjust for the different length of the telescope. So they're all designed so the focal point of the objective is here and then it's a different length for the focal length of the eyepiece. So if you have a large magnification, it's short. Low magnification, it's long. So they all fit the same mount. Good to know? Easy to do problems? Because that's what your homework's primarily going to be. Oh, cool. Was there a question there? Okay, so we have magnification is equal to, it's got to be minus 50 because of the minus sign. Even though this doesn't have a minus, I have to understand it's going to be negative. Is equal to minus the focal length of the objective over focal length of the eyepiece. Solve the focal length of the eyepiece. And so that's going to be 1.00 meters over 50. We're putting the numbers in the last step. Good enough? All right. Something that is kind of cool. We don't like inverted images if we're looking at something other than stars. One way of taking care of that is by putting in a field lens. The field lens is a lens that comes in the field between the objective and the eyepiece. Eyepiece closest to the eye. Objective closest to the object, field lens is in between. And so in this case shown, you have your object way out here, makes its first image here, that's the object for the field lens, which here it's called the erecting lens. And then that makes an image here, a secondary image, and then that's the object for the eyepiece. Does that affect the magnification then? Absolutely does, yes. Okay. Other, actually, I said Newtonian. I think the Newtonian design is actually like this. <laughs> I think the Newtonian is a reflector. Um, you have light coming in, hits a mirror that focuses the light, and then this has a secondary mirror that's going to reflect the light out through the hole, and you have the eyepiece. What's a negative here? You're blocking some light with this secondary mirror. So you don't have all of the light. What's a positive? Well, you can have a shorter telescope. And you just, if you see one where you're looking in the side, that's why. It has a mirror in here, and the path from the objective to the eyepiece is going from here to there. So you add all of that up for the, the length of the telescope. Now, that's not your best design. That's the intermediate design. The best design, the one that's used by almost all research-grade telescopes, but don't have a picture of it, is the, the Cassegrain design. The Cassegrain design is you have an objective 
called the objective because it's the first optical thing that is going to focus the light. And then you have a secondary out here. And then you have an eyepiece here. So in this case, the optical length of the telescope would be from here to here to here. And so the length of the telescope is about one half of the optical length. So it allows you to get the shortest length possible. But once again, a negative is you're blocking any light that came in here. All of that gets blocked. Only the light that's outside comes in. But in terms of area, area is pi r squared. So if this here is like three inches in diameter, the area you're blocking is 1.5 squared times pi. And if you have a 16 inch opening, your area is eight squared times pi. Eight over 1.5 squared is pretty close to eight squared. So we don't worry about it, we lose a little. So this here is the Cassegrain design. And so in that joke picture about the vampire, the guy with the Cassegrain design telescope doesn't see him because it's a reflector, it has mirrors, and vampires don't have reflection apparently. Since vampires don't exist, we cannot test this scientifically. So here are some examples of telescopes. Here is a telescope. Now, we're not looking at the working end of a telescope, but it's a big dish. Does anybody know what the biggest telescope on Earth is or where it is? In Puerto Rico, the Arecibo Telescope. It's, the, it's, it's like three football fields in diameter. No, it's enormous. If you watch the movie GoldenEye, it's featured in GoldenEye. And, and it's funny because in GoldenEye, it's filled with water to, to make it so nobody knows it's there. Um, and, and then they drain it. And it, when it gets, I have to tell you this because it violates the second law of thermodynamics. What is the second law of thermodynamics? In what? It's in Puerto Rico. Maybe it's an island in Puerto Rico. I say I don't know. What? What? I thought you answered about. Oh, I forgot. Total entropy of an isolated system can never decrease over time. Okay, there's one statement. Total entropy of an isolated system can never decrease over time. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. We often call it times error because it's the only real law of physics that says the direction things have to go. That is it. And so in the movie Goldeneye, when it's draining, when it gets down to the bottom, you have the water. Well, first, as it's draining, you have the line between wet and dry concrete. And as it drains, that line just keeps dropping. And then when it gets near the bottom, the water jumps up and goes down into the center. Well, it doesn't. It doesn't have water. That was no, for the movie. It, it was, oh, I'm sure it has actual physical drains. Anyway, they, they clearly just videotaped a model filling water from the bottom and then ran the video backward. But you can see the difference, and that's second law is what tells us, yeah, can, couldn't have done that. Okay, back to this. So this is a dish antenna. This here is, I believe, a microwave. Does it say here? It doesn't say what type it is, but I think it's a microwave. Um, the little satellite dishes that you have outside your house are microwave dishes. Of course, your cell phone's also a microwave um, device. This here is an X-ray telescope. The Chandra telescope is an X-ray telescope. It's focusing X-rays, and it's a completely different lens design. This here just looks like a regular old, whoops, my color was blue. This here is just a regular old concave mirror. 
but the lower one is actually using electromagnetism to change the direction. It's a much more complicated situation. <sighs> You've never seen a telescope farm, have you? Yes, ma'am. Oh, it is. Oh, goodness. All right. Well, I will never see you again. Don't say that. Don't, 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 don't,